Hi, today I'll be making a water ray gun. <laughs> or at least try. See, originally I wanted to rectify this stupid video made by this guy who makes fake videos and gets millions of views. Millions of views you can instead spend at my sponsor Brilliance to learn actual skills you can excel your life with. Sign up from the link in the description for free to get a 30 day free trial. Free! More at the end. He shows by placing two electromagnets on the sides of a steel pipe you can make a very strong pump. Rectify time! The Rectifier! I mean, some poor farmers may see these videos and think, hey, why should I pay for an expensive pump when all I need is to slap two microwave oven transformers together to make a super strong pump and end up electrocuting themselves. And a lot of us content creators have to waste our times debunking this rubbish and hopefully educate more people in the process, while in fact getting more views ourselves and make some extra juicy internet money. Uh, so I guess I should be thanking these fakers. What? No! You don't teach anything by misleading people. Anyway, trying to debunk it, I wound up in a deeper educational rabbit hole. Well, the video is obviously fake because, among other things, water is not magnetic. Repeat after me. Water is not magnetic! I noticed another YouTuber called Thinklist already made a video debunking it, showing that although the pipe seems empty, in another scene he actually tried and failed to hide an actuator in the pipe. Right there. <laughs> Torsion magnetic field effect! <laughs> or in this scene, he's actually hiding a powerful pump under the water and he's pushing his pipe into. Then, Thinklist mentions something that intrigued me. There's just not enough uh, ions inside of the water to be able to push plus. Hmm. What do ions in the water have to do with anything? And then he mentions another effect. There is actually a way that you can move water using magnetics and it's called magnetohydrodynamics. Magnetohydrodynamic, that's a mouthful. He doesn't explain it in details and refers us to a video made by the one and only The Action Lab. Mr. Lab actually moves water using a set of permanent magnets and running DC current through the water. So, is water magnetic? No, you can't move water with just electromagnets like that fake guy showed. The whole premise of moving water is based on the fact that impure water is conductive, like this. See resistance of oh, Such tests with 120 volts is dangerous and can instead be done with a low voltage battery and a single LED. You can't do these tests with non-conductive pure water. The more ionized impurities are in the water, the less resistive it becomes. Now placing a magnetic field beside the conductive water, I should be able to create eddy currents in it. Well, electric eddy, not fluid eddy. Watch my previous video on eddy current. And of course we need AC power, because without changing magnetic fields, you won't induce current anywhere. But what do we expect to happen? Let me try something first. So this is my microwave oven transformer that I modified in my previous video to make thousands of amps. I don't need this anymore. Let's hold the core with a clamp so it doesn't fall apart. And this is a sheet of steel. Now if I turn the electromagnet on and place the sheet metal on it, oh, my fuse popped. <laughs> Hmm. Without the top of the transformer on, the magnetic fields close through the air, which is what we want. But that significantly drops the inductance, raising the current. Anyway, I place the sheet on first and turn it on, so in a bit of time we have, we can observe something. Oh my god! <laughs> Oop, the breaker popped. <laughs> so much vibration! Yeah, trying to lift it. The breaker popped. So, magnet strongly attracts the steel. Now, I try a sheet of aluminum that is not ferromagnetic. Oh, this one falls off. 
I'm holding the sheet of aluminum above the magnet and let's connect and disconnect it to see what happens. Oh jeez. I guess it's time to put my stressed old friend to sleep. Rest in peace. Oh, see? It is moving up now. See, changing magnetic fields create eddy currents in the sheet of metal that oppose their creator that pushes them back. Same in aluminum or steel. But in steel that is also ferromagnetic, its magnetic particles also line up with the creator's fields that create an overall stronger attracting magnet. Water is not magnetic. So I expect it to behave more like the aluminum sheet being pushed away from the electromagnet. Let's see. Let's make some highly saturated conductive water. Now we pour it in some plastic plate thingy. Uh, now we hold the electromagnet on top of the water uh, and plug it in. Oh, Well, make sure nothing is shorting first, then plug it in. Oh. It's getting attracted to my table. Fine, I'll bring it close to the water from under the plate. It's easier to hold too. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Not the... Absolutely nothing! <laughs> I'm pretty sure there must be a very small force on the water, but apparently not big enough for me to see any movement. And I think I know the reason why. You remember how little my aluminum sheet moved and its resistance is well under one ohm. And the resistance of the salt water is like... What? Minus two mega ohms? I think I made a battery. I'll run a constant 10 milliamps through the water and the voltage across it is uh, 1.2, 1.3 volts, so around 130 ohms. Now if I raise the current to 0.1 amps, 2.3 almost, like 23 ohms, the resistance of the water is not linear. I hate working with salt water, I'm all salty. In any case, the transformer creates the same electromagnetic force or voltage across both these. But the resistance of the salt water is like hundreds or thousands of times larger than the aluminum sheet. So much smaller eddy currents are created in the salt water and almost no effect. So that video was fake as f But let's see if I can make that water railgun I was trying to make using the magnetohydrodynamic effect or whatever. Let's do it. I crazy glue some magnets on a sheet of plastic with the same polarities facing the same way. I cut two strips of aluminum sheets, then hot glue the strips perpendicular to the opposite side of the plastic sheet on the edge of the magnets. Like this. There. And now I can cut the extra piece of plastic. And here's our tiny little water railgun, which is very much the same as a regular railgun. Why do I call it a railgun? Because it is a railgun. I explained railguns in my previous video. But let me explain it again. So there are these two rails with a voltage potential across them and some conductive bridge shorts between them creating a current through the loop and magnetic fields around the wires that pushes the bridge forward. You can significantly increase the magnetic field between the rails by adding permanent magnets above and below the rails and that increases the force on the bridge and makes it shoot faster. The bridge can be anything conductive like salt water. Issue is, salt water has much higher resistance compared to, say, copper that limits its current much more and so much less force on it. What I'm saying is that don't raise your expectation too much. And here it is, connected to a power supply that can do 30 volts, 10 amps. Now let's pour some highly concentrated salt water in it and see if it shoots. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it's shooting out, ah, <laughs> and it's boiling. 
Oh my god. Let's add some more. <laughs> it is shooting out. Well, well, shooting is a strong word. I guess it's just sliding out. And of course, if we switch the polarity of the voltage, now it should go the other way. Whee! It goes that way. You know, there is too much cooking going around here. I think the water just should shoot out quickly and get out of the way before it just boils here. Hmm, you know what can make it shoot out faster? Higher current, which means higher voltage. Here's an old friend, the full bridge rectifier with a giant capacitor at the output that can create 170 volt DC. <laughs> Let's connect it up. Here you go. We have around 160 volt DC at our disposal. Okay, let's plug it in. Now, how fast would the water shoot out? Place your bets in the comments. Ready to go? Oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> well, the good thing is that it burns itself out. But the water doesn't get out quickly. Well, let's try it again anyways. <laughs> doesn't really shoot, does it? It's all melting. The plastic is too flimsy and the hot glue is hot glue. Well, let's try again anyways. Cheers! Oh my god! I have a feeling my magnets are doing nothing. And this brings us to the issue of permanent magnets and heat. Here is the original magnet, still nice and strong, but these guys lost their magnetism because of the heat. If there was a constant stream of water cooling it down, they would survive. Pish. They barely stick together now. Here, I made a new one. But this time, instead of pouring water inside of it and let it get stuck and boil and burn and melt, I'm going to lower this inside the water with my 160 volt DC and let the water keep flowing through it. All charged. Let's put it in. Ooh. Wow. Should I just quickly dip it? Let's try it. Oh, the breaker popped drawing too much current. Hmm. Let's put it in the water first, then I'll quickly connect the wire. Ready, set, go! Ah, it draws tens of amps and my breakers pop. I guess I have to limit the current to the 10 amp from my power supply. And we connect it up. What? I was shocked by 30 volt DC. <laughs> I guess salt water makes your skin so conductive, a lot more current runs through you. The key is not to touch any voltage. Okay, let's see. It's flowing very slowly. It's not even visible. Let's pour some pepper on it maybe. Add some pepper to your mix. And hopefully this time we'll see. What the hell? The flow is under the peppers. <laughs> what a flimsy flow. I'll just put it the other way under the water. Like this. Oh, oh, we have the flow, we have a flow. Whee! 10 amps for such a tiny flow. I wonder if all these gases coming from the water are poisonous or not. Wow, what an incredible flow. This is pretty much putting shame to the name of a railgun. <laughs> Well, at least I guess it's some sort of motor with no moving parts that destroys the water and is super inefficient and creates poisonous gases. So I guess it's a win. <laughs> and now we have firework, damn it. And the motor is destroyed. Jeez, this is more fun. Who cares about the railgun? Look at this. <laughs> Hmm. Is water railgun any good? Not really. It constantly breaks down the water under electrolysis to create a piece of a water flow. Just use a motor, not this garbage. Well, I guess every experiment is an educational opportunity. 
and you can learn a ton of knowledge and skill sets for such projects from my sponsor Brilliant. And a great example is lessons on electricity and magnetism, which are full of illustrations, animations, and explanations to get you started on electronics. And you can do it free visiting brilliant.org slash electroboom to not only get a 30-day free trial in which you can finish a ton of lessons already, but also the first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Why do you think I like to put things together myself? Because interacting with stuff helps you stay engaged and learn better. And that's why Brilliant is the best place to learn simple to complex concepts of math, science and computing through interactive lessons. Like you know how artificial intelligence is becoming huge? Maybe you like to deepen your understanding of AI before take over. Or maybe you have a specific need to know some math, science or computing for your work or school. Learn it at your own convenience at Brilliant. 30 day free trial. It's like they want to give you gold for free. Sign up from brilliant.org slash electroboom and enjoy learning and feel confident about your knowledge. And thank you for watching.